salutations. Love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace. 655. My uh, miracle candle going off at 7 o'clock these days. Signs. God promised that he would send signs in the latter days. The uh, miracle sign of Zechariah 3, 4, and 5 is at hand here. First he picks a derelict guy that would have been that would have died from a bag of glue glued to his face was I then the Lord lights one candlestick Zechariah 4 and then comes the flying scroll which is the written everlasting gospel of Revelation 14 foretold to come at this hour with the covenant messenger am I so praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, which is these uh, videos. Hopefully, if people will ever uh, not ignore me. And remember, there is no darkness but ignorance alone. These are the days where the wise may shine as the stars. If you're willing, if you're open-hearted, open-minded. If otherwise, people are going to be closed-hearted, closed-minded, won't be able to have open hands for anything that God sends. And the, the drop of his love that he's pouring out upon all flesh, as the prophet Joel foretold, no one can receive it if they're full of religiosity, if they ha have to have closed eyes and embrace ignorance as their pillow. Uh, because uh, if they were able to, to grasp that one drop of love, they would find within it an oh, uh, uh, endless ocean of his adoration that is far deeper than previously understood provably at this point. So nor should the flocks of our good shepherd over all the flocks of men, John 10, 15, 16, is Isa Yeshua Jesus. He was never the Messiah of Christians or the Messiah of Islam or Yeshua the Messiah of uh, Judaism. So it doesn't matter whether you call him Jesus, Isa, Yeshua, he's always been the Lord God of all mankind, the, the good shepherd over all the flocks of men. He said so, John 10, 15, 16. We have gotten off track. Know that he himself prayed for his believers to become one with one another in John 17, 20. And this is his faith of the risen good shepherd over all mankind, John 10, 15, 16 that he foretold that would come in the last times and all opposed to this are fully antichrist and don't want kingdom age peace because it begins now if it's conceivable now it can be achieved now through understanding of love that has been uh, the veil that has covered all of mankind the gross darkness thereby of uh, Isaiah 60 so know that uh, the Lord and uh, God are one and thankfully his supplications have been finally made manifest that he prayed for in the garden. I uh, have finally manifested uh, through this extraordinary great news of his anointed people's deepest and fervent devotions being answered. In the latter days, Jeremiah 30, 24 says, and Jeremiah 31, 1, that he would be the God of Israel and all families of Israel and all mankind, because it was always addressed to all mankind. I am the Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. And when the seven trumpets sounded first, because the first was last and the last was first, then uh, immediately all nations became the Lord and people the first are last and the last are first has already that you need to understand that that's why Jesus said so many times because one of the last things according to our schedule of religion would be naturally the uh, revealing there's the little light of mine and it is 659 right now 659 so it's going backwards someday. I don't know how long this, I've, I've got no control over this light. 
I never really know is it really going to turn on again because it's impossible to turn on that kind of light un unless unless you grab the little light bulb and you got to twist it. It's just a two dollar made in China candlestick with the battery in there. And if anyone has a scientific reason why this is able to happen, please let me know because by my understanding of all that I know, this is impossible, what you have just seen. That light does not come on, there's no timer in it. And if there was, it would be going the other way, it wouldn't be counting backwards, it would be going the other way because I live in Ontario and the days are getting uh, longer. But praise God, free at last, free at last. We can all be free at last if people will realize the utter gospel truth that I bring with the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14. This, lean not unto your own understandings. Google uh, New Jerusalem NASA. This is the images that you will see. It's a photograph of New Jerusalem that is on the edge of our universe, a celestial city foretold to come at the end. And it is a photograph of that taken by the Hubble uh, telescope. And um, it was foretold to come at the end of uh, everything else, Armageddon, Antichrist. Meanwhile, it's always been one of the first because one of the first things the first is last and the last is first so the unveiling has always been opposite order uh, heaven um, order by the Lord God so it's time for us to become open-minded more than ever so let all people whether they be Christians Islamics uh, Jew, uh, Jews whether they be agnostics or atheists or homosexual or alcoholic or uh, criminals or sheiks or Satanists, or uh, Mormons, or whatever rocks your boat. Let all people press in now and discover why this testament of God's glory is important because it was foretold in Habakkuk that his glory would cover the earth as waters cover the seas, as grass covers the lands, as sands cover even the most desolate of deserts and uh, uh, even all the mountain tops with snow and his glory shall be globally all over this earth. Praise God, free at last. And that is why this little light of the uh, seventh angel of Revelation 10:7 7 blew first. The seven trumpet sounded first because the first is last and last is first. And when the seven trumpet blew, all nations immediately became the Lord. And in between, they were always as anyways. So there's been no change not a nothing uh, all is as it was but the veil has been pulled so that mankind can see that it's never been about what we've done for him but what he has done for us there was a time when the covenant could never be uh, uh, eternal life could never be claimed this side of the border and be inherited Paul said that no one in the flesh could inherit the kingdom of God and that would not hold true anymore because God is now speaking to one and all of us uh, in the latter days, as it says uh, in Jeremiah 31, that um, God is saying, I will be your God, you will be my people, Israel, and all mankind. And uh, beyond that, uh, the, the Lord says, I will forgive your iniquity and I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love on your heart. And beyond that, all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Now, God would be a liar right there if that was not true and literal. Uh, but it is and because those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. That's the key to understanding all distortional understanding because it's literal. Uh, 1 John 4, 7, those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. Uh, we want to get born again, flame back on. Be as little children, flame back on, love again, flame on. Johnny Torch time. And the the truth is that uh, even the atheists know him. They don't believe in him. Uh, they're like fish in the water. They will never agree that it's called water, that its name is H2O. They don't believe that, ever, but they know they're wet. And that's all that they care about because it, it keeps them able to live and to breathe. But the truth is, if we do not commit the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the unforgivable sin is to let our light of love go out. So when the Bible says all those walking with the Spirit 
are uh, under no condemnation. It's as simple as walking with your love light on. That's it. And uh, it's never been about born again speaking in tongues. I, I, I speak in tongues, and good if you do. And if you don't, good too. It doesn't matter. That's for a personal uh, exhortation. But uh, the, the truth is, born again has always been to have your love light on. And if you're part of the waxing, uh, uh, you're letting your love wax cold, you would perish in a hell of your own manufacture. But God is shutting and has shut the door of hell to all of mankind because if he threw one of us in hell for our sin, he would be a liar. Get that into your head because his word says so that I will be your God, you will be my people, I will forgive your iniquity, and I will never remember it. How is he going to condemn us to, to a hell for our sin if we don't repent, If uh, without him remembering our sin? It's impossible. This has been the mystery of God set to be uh, unveiled in the latter days by a latter day Daniel, Daniel 12, 13 who would arise and cause the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7, because God's word opens anew, Daniel 12, 9, and it was only closed until the time of the end. It had to reopen because the message of Malachi 3, 1 is the message from the north in Isaiah 41 to Israel. And I have given it again and again, thus saith God to Israel, now, you, now God is your God and uh, he's the God of all your people too, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? They ain't saying a mumbling word. And that is foretold in Isaiah 41 that they wouldn't. And uh, But it also foretells that all the rest of the world will come to realize that I am right. That's what Isaiah 41 foretells. I am right. It says that. That they will realize I am right. Because this has been preached from the beginning. This change at the end. Um, that Shiloh would come. One whose eyes are dull and red of wine, the alcoholic of Habakkuk too, one transgressed by wine, but the just shall live by his faith, even though his soul is not upright. Why? Because I am already as greedy as hell, and I shall embrace all people of the earth unto myself for a risen Savior, a Redeemer. Lord, our majesty of majesties, hero of heroes, is he, and he comes forth on the great white cloud of Revelation 14, sending forth his everlasting gospel, and his everlasting gospel writer um, is, is foretold to contain the everlasting covenant of uh, Jeremiah 31 in Malachi 31. It says so, the covenant messenger would uh, come forth. And people, Jesus has never been the covenant messenger. He said, Yeshua, I don't care what you call him. Don't call him late for dinner now. No, uh, in all sincerity, he's never been the messenger. Behold the messenger that prepares the way before the Lord. The, the Lord has a messenger. He's not the messenger. He's the writer. He's the mediator. He's the sender of his message. But it is his message alone that will uh, right all wrongs and bring back understanding of a non-distortional uh, nature because we've only known in part and only have seen in part and only have been looking through a glass darkly. But Paul foretells that when the Kingdom Age Covenant comes, Hebrews 8, he spells it out and he, he rewrites all of what I have just preached, what, which is written in Jeremiah 31. And he said, and when this comes, all that was before is obsolete. Uh, Islam, obsolete. Christianity, obsolete. Judaism, all, all obsolete. Because in the end, the result of everything that's happened up until now provably is desolate heritages of Isaiah 49, 8. Because religion has been a vain attempt all this time to make God into a respecter of men and to have favorites, to help him love us more than them and acceptance of us more than those and and what do we got we got a world of them them hates those and those hates these and these hates everybody and everybody hates everybody it's all off and it went off track two thousand years ago when early christian says we are israel and all mankind and they grabbed that jewish uh prophecy that was inclusive for all mankind and they switched it and they said we are israel and all mankind <laughs> 
uh, they did not understand the prophecy. And then they said, and the prophecy is fulfilled now. And the prophecy was never to even be given until the latter days. It says so. Jeremiah 31. So let all people of wisdom press in that want to shine as the stars that we were fearfully and wonderfully created to be the, the, the highest creation of all. And let us discover that uh, Christ's glory shall now become even more valuable because it's, it's, it's a radiance that will burn all the blinders off all eyes of all religious people. For it is written that in these latter days the proud and the arrogant shall have no root or branch left to hold on to and uh, thereby would become days burning as an oven just as um, uh, Sir Isaac uh, Newton foretold. He said that Elijah would come forth at the end and stand up insisting on his literal interpretation of Bible prophecy amidst much clamor and opposition because these are the days of Shiloh, the days of Elijah, the days of the latter day Daniel, all the same, water, steam, and ice. Um, these are those days and the days of the trial of all flesh, COVID-3, that's come to, to bring God's word of patience, to keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change. These are those days. And in these days, these are the days of Habakkuk 2.2 2, resounding, for this vision was written plainly on the tablet, so all that heareth it may run fast. It is time for the weak to leave the terrors. It is time for people that will believe God's prophecy uh, to leave those who will not because thereby will kill and destroy spiritual racism on earth and bring forth the day of Micah 4, 5, the fullness of the kingdom age when those ones will walk un un with the name of their God and those ones will walk under the name of their God and there'll be peace in between no one uh, pointing fingers at each other with condemnation anymore. So shall it be. The Prince of Peace has spoken. So uh, know that Christ's glory is now springing forth from uh, the praising uh, mouths of hundreds of his anointed Israel Israelites. 144,000 are to be ignited with his refiner's fire flowing through this channel. And once their wicks get lit, the circle of the earth shall burn, burn with the scroll of Zechariah, and it shall consume houses from within, and it'll consume the people, and those people that have had a bad understanding of God's love, distortional, uh, will be straightened around. Muhammad even said that uh, the day was coming, uh, the distortion would be fixed. And he said it would happen because of a book coming to prove in God's mercy. And he knew that book was behind him, Jeremiah. And he, that's why he said there would never be another prophet ahead of him. And he was right. It's always been the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1.10, Haggai 2.2 2, uh, proves it. They, uh, God's word says that at the end, God would come and tear down all the kingdoms of man's imagination, all the religion, the, the gross darkness, religion of uh, looking through a veil darkly and that he would remove the veil so that we could clearly see the error of our ways and come to understand that the drop of love that we've been clinging on to was always an ocean of his adoration and we could never discern the depths thereof. So blessed are all those opening up their guarded, formerly guarded hearts to the voices of our forefathers within this guide to many uh, blessings that are flowing for the kingdom age. And they need to re resound through this written gift of God sent line upon line, precept upon precept. Isaiah 28 foretold a writer, and Moses foretold a writer, a covenant giver for the kingdom age, another causing uh, the great exodus of Second Thessalonians that must happen before the Messiah can return. He's calling for it now. The sickle has been put into the earth, and it is time for the wheat to leave the tares. Otherwise, if you don't take the good fruit out of the bowl, all the fruit will become bad. So it's never been about the bad leaving the good, as people of religiosity has always thought wrongly. But now stone-cold hearts can become flesh, 
uh, as people realize the, the purest gospel truth, that his love has been transcendent, and that it's never mattered what the heck anybody's ever believed, because his love is fully transcendent. Paul wrote, I'm convinced that, uh, about God's love that nothing has ever, uh, not heaven or hell, good understandings or bad understandings, none of it has ever made any difference, which renders uh, uh, all faith of Abrahamic now obsolete, because it proves that our righteousness always has been as filthy rags before the Lord comparison compared to his unconditional love that has been fully transcendent and always will be for one and all of us. And accordingly, the inspirational sayings of, of, of love must now flow and, and go beyond Catholics, Protestants, believers, unbelievers, alcoholics, murderers, I don't care what the flying flip, I don't care who you are. If you have your love light on, you are a born again person of love, but you don't let it die because it, then, it, then you have a form of godliness, but to deny the power thereof, if you're letting it wax cold, then your love is only a noun, and if it's a noun, you're part of the walking dead, and you will perish. So it's time to go forward and let, stir up your love, flame back on, be born again. And then what will happen is you can go forward in victory of love. And uh, vic victory is before all of us that will turn on our light because our love must be a verb. It must be an action for us to leave the ranks of the walking dead. Otherwise, we're a spiritual zombie the rest of our life. Uh, and if, we, in the extreme, if we let our light go right out, we would create a hell of our own, for that is the correct interpretation of the unforgivable sin, as it is written. So let this good news uh, go forth sea to sea, from ocean to ocean, and from spring to spring, that those who love are born of God and know God, because God is love. John the Beloved said that his words, those words, had to go again to all people, just like the everlasting gospel that I have written must go to all people, to all nations, to all tribes. And if you don't believe that I am the everlasting gospel writer, then uh, uh, fluff off. <laughs> go stand in the mortgage line. No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't be that mean. Watch the very first video under this channel, and you will hear the reason why Moses said that one like him would come forth in Deuteronomy 18, 18. It's the new creation gospel that is foretold in Revelation 14. So these are the days for uh, his love to spring forth with the greatest zest, uh, potency, and vitality imaginable as he now pours out his spirit upon all flesh. And once he pours it out, there's no putting it back in the container. It's out there. And so is the truth now at this station. But know that the living water that Christ is offering through his dove of love here and exceeds every drop of water from all of those other waters for floods of praise flows fast herein as Christ's living waters gushes into the joyous hearts of God's children who will open their hearts to admonishment and the exaltation and magnification of his love and as we exalt his love that exalts him within us because those who love are born of God and know God because God is love of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands command ye me Isaiah 45 and I did and next thing I knew I was writing by a lamp that was never plugged in for at least uh, seven minutes God turned on the candlestick for me and he's doing it again right now uh, to, to, to break down the uh, icy, icy wall, uh, and the spiritual empowerment coming through such worship of exaltation of his living peace is the result of his waters flowing back into people, uh, beat after beat, and thanksgiving within such, such uh, obedient souls will then suddenly flow back unto our Most High through himself as Christ. So he sends the light unto us, just so that we may reflect it back unto him. So love from love, and remember that Christ has transcended all religion, and religion is fully obsolete. He is love. God is love. 
and he will prove it in this hour because prophecy has never been told to tell the future. It has been told to change it. The precedent has been set, Jonah 3. God relented, it says so. Read it. He changed his mind. He did not destroy them after he said, you're going to be destroyed, you know. Good news. God says, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation that would flatten earth and kill all mankind. Zephaniah 1, 1, and all fish and all birds, all would be lifeless. The the total total oblivion of Isaiah 24, earth torn in three, four pieces, dead, never to rise again. The oblivion of Matthew 24, 22, Unless the former age of grace was cut short by his word anew, Daniel 12, 9, that was only closed until the time of the end, in order for his kingdom age covenant to come forth for all mankind, to pour out his love upon all flesh, this world could never make it.